Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, this video is going to be just a uh, unboxing of my new Shipoko uh, Pro. This is the XL. I'm going to go through just kind of the overall steps. However, I have noticed um, some other videos stated that they didn't have the instruction manual in there. But I got a pretty detailed instruction manual. There's a couple of things that are really unclear in it but it has to do with some changing in the hardware they send um, as opposed to the instructions themselves. I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, mistakes that I made um, and also some things that were not included that you probably need to know. All right, let's get started. One great thing is right there on the front of the box, it says open first, so you can't mess up at least the first box anyway. This box actually has the base frame in it, as well as the manual that you will see me hold up, and it is very detailed and also gives you a content list for each box. I will say that there were a couple of screws missing out of the main bag here. However, there are a few extra screws when you get to the end, so that shouldn't be an issue. And I'm pretty sure quickly I found the culprit of the missing screws. See how they were open there. I think I lost a couple during shipping. No big deal. I'm going to go ahead and open the Y-axis left and right rails, although they are not indicated at this time. I just wanted to look at them, so I end up setting them to the side and continue with the build. Everything does come very well packaged and very well labeled as well. You just got to make sure those supports there are hand tight. And then when you put these uh, support panels on, you got to make sure that the two small holes right by the middle panel are actually to the outside and towards the front of the machine. Also make sure when you're putting these in, you snug them down and back them out a quarter of a turn. We don't have to worry about squaring the machine up right now. That's gonna come a little bit later and it's also gonna kind of self-square as you put things together. These rails are pretty easy to put on. They take a long bolt that just goes through three spots. You just need to make sure that when you put them on, you're going from the front to the back and then to the center. Now I'm going to install the bit setter. I got the pro version which comes with the bit setter. If you're on the fence and not sure if you want to go ahead and spend the extra money to add it on to the one you're getting, I highly recommend it. It saves a ton of time. The back right end plate also has a connection that goes to it. The other two for the left side are just mirror images. This is the X gantry. Uh, I will tell you that even in the book it says that the tolerances on installing this are very close. 
They absolutely are. You have to make sure you're dead on the money uh, putting them in. I had a couple of problems here lining up one of the screws. Just make sure you do not use power tools on any of this assembly and make sure you um, are really careful about cross threading because it is really easy to do, uh, especially on the gantry. Here I'm going to install the belt that goes from one side to the other. I actually end up putting the bolt in the wrong way. So learn from my mistake. When you put the belt through the buckle, the nut that holds it is actually going to come through the outside into the inside and into that buckle to hold it in place. Um, don't try to put the bolt from the inside out like I did. It will not work. Basically, you're just going to leave about four or five inches on one end and then thread it through like I showed you, pull it across to the other side. And you're going to want to make sure you use a tool and actually pull the belt up like you'll see me do here in just a second through the little rollers there so it can go around the stepper motor. Otherwise, it would be very difficult once you had the other end installed and I'm going to repeat the same process on this side. This is actually how you thread the buckle through and you want to make sure that the little uh, grooves there interlock once you get this thing put in its place and tightened down so it can grip. I'll actually show you how to pull it through um, when I get to the gantry side and up over the stepper motor because you definitely have to do it on the back side before you place the stepper motor into its frame. One thing I actually forgot to mention is about the belts. If you bought the XL like I did, the belts as well as what you will see here in a minute with the drag chain, they come as one size to fit the XXL. So you will actually have to cut those down once you run those through just to leave that extra four or five inches um, on the end. And then I will explain how to do the drag chain once we get to there. Once you get one side secure and you're going to go to the other side and tighten it up, you only want about a couple of millimeters from the end of the buckle to the actual outside rail. That way it will pull it tight. You don't want much more than that or you'll actually have the belt a little too tight. Once you get that finished, then you can release the gantry. Um, just undo the little bolts that are in the side. There's one on each side and you're going to start your first process about squaring the machine up. Everything should be a little loose right now. So when you slide the gantry all the way forward, it should touch those front plates on both sides at the same time. Uh, you may have to uh, wiggle it just a little bit to get it in place, but it should be pretty close. And then once you do that, you just tighten down those long bolts and your uh, Y rails and um, do them also from front to back and then center on each side. Okay, this box should have your XZ assembly as well as your stepper motor and everything you need to put it together. This is really a pretty easy process as well. The book is very detailed as far as well, where your bolts go. 
So all you have to do is really pay attention to it. Once you release the slide there for the uh, assembly, it's pretty easy just to put right on. This is the same as the two side rail belts. You want to leave a little bit of space on each end. And then when you come through the middle here, right here is where you want to make sure you pull that loop up because you're going to put your stepper motor in right there and attach it. So it would be pretty much impossible to do if you skip that process right there. But it's going to go the same as the side rails. You're going to go ahead and run it through there, leave you a few inches on each side and tighten it up the same with that couple of millimeter gap on the final end just to pull the belt tight. To know you've got the belt at its correct uh, tightness, you should just be able to barely pull up on it and it snap back down. So this is the drag chain assembly. I can tell you the same thing goes for the uh, one on the side rail as it did for the belts. It is the same length for the XXL. You will have to pull some links out of that. So the reason you keep seeing me look at this bracket funny is because in the direction, it's just a drag chain head bracket and it does not look like this. It looks like a single piece. But what they've done is sometime in between, they've actually engineered it to make it better and where there were two different parts before apparently they have made it one part that you just install right here at this point instead of two separate points like the directions say Once you get this in, you just want to make sure you set your uh, spindle to go all the way down. Um, if you've got the one that came with the Pro, um, you're better off uh, because the cord, if you can see here, is really, really long. And that's going to be a big deal if you happen to buy a Makita or something like that to go in here. You will have to pop all of these on the drag chain apart with a little screwdriver so you can actually get the cord in there. But what they don't tell you is this one here, like I said, is the length for an XXL. So you wind up having to remove several of the links. I can't remember exactly how many are on it, but you have to bring it down to, I believe, 22 links, not including the headpiece to make it fit properly. If you decided to purchase the hybrid table, this is the box it comes in. I do highly recommend it. Everything is there for you and it doesn't take very long to set up. Once you get the hybrid table installed, it will actually completely finish squaring the machine up. There are a bunch of screws, but again, do not use power tools for this. It doesn't take that long. Just use the tools that come with it. And it does come with some actually very nice um, Allen wrenches. Thank you. 
the same thing is going to go for these as well as the MDF strips that you're going to put in here, um, your um, waste board. You want to start from the front, go to the back, and then do the center on all of these. It helps keep them in line. And I'm going to open the box here in a minute, and I'm going to show you the controller. I did not film the installation of the controller, only because, real honestly, I could not find a good camera angle that wasn't in my way trying to get it done. But basically, it goes right there where you're looking at on the right side of the screen. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's got some little... Um, step offs that go in and it connects to those and then everything is labeled very well on all the cables and the controller itself so it's pretty easy to figure out where everything plugs into The kit also comes with some hold downs and everything. So here's where I'm showing you the uh, cables and everything, how they're labeled after I had the controller hooked up. It's really, really super simple to put together. And as you can hear in the background, I'm actually running it right now while I'm filming this. Well, I hope that video was helpful. Um, I made a few mistakes in it, but hopefully you can learn from the mistakes I made. I've been running the machine for a little while now. It's probably taken me about three or four weeks to film everything and uh, get everything edited. So I'm still learning at the CNC machine. So uh, maybe I'll do a few month review after I've had it for a while to Kind of see what we think but so far it's been going great the software is pretty easy to learn um, if you're going to use the carbide create software that comes with it and the uh, processor is carbide motion they work very well there are some other ones out there that you can get i've looked into those uh, but so far i'm happy with the uh, carbide create all right thanks for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a like it really helps out see you we